hello it's us the reason it's been such a long time since our last video i feel like i keep making excuses i did this last time as well but um we've been having a very exciting time some might say too exciting since we last made a video we have moved our boat from one place to another place the process of getting there wasn't quite as smooth as we originally hoped it was a bit of a trial for a first voyage it tested us in ways we couldn't have imagined so we thought we would make this video to tell you the story of <laughs> how everything went wrong on our maiden voyage oh by the way <laughs> You may have noticed that we changed our channel name. Obviously our last video was about how we were changing our channel name, but in case you didn't see it, we are no longer called Love and Lentils. We are called the... <laughs> <laughs> the Voyaging Vegans. Oh, Get yes. with the program. <laughs> Even I don't know this. <laughs> we were going to be called the Vegan Voyagers, and then we noticed someone was already using the name, which we should have checked beforehand, but we didn't because we're idiots. So anyway, with Voyaging Vegans. Alright, so we were at a bit of a time pressure to get out of where we were moored. Um, we were supposed to have moved on months before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> until the uh, lockdown hit, so we had overstayed our welcome ever so slightly. <laughs> yeah, and the guy was dropping a lot of subtle hints that he really needed us to move on now, and he had another boat that he needed to put in the spot where we were and we were feeling very pressured to leave. So one of the last projects that we had to finish up before we left was the solar arch because we needed to have the solar panels on the boat somehow. We were rushing like mad trying to get the solar arch done. Just the day before we left we were finally putting the panels in place. So once the solar arch was up we were feeling a little bit concerned that it wasn't strong enough beforehand. We had no idea really how sturdy it would be once it was up. But at that point, there wasn't really much we could do because we'd just run out of time. In hindsight, we probably should have tied it down to make sure it would be okay, at least until we got to our destination. It had crossed my mind, but by the time we had to go, it just hadn't happened. So being new to boating, um, we weren't about to cross the heat Bristol Channel on our own. No. -uh. <laughs> We've heard that it is one of the most difficult stretches of water in the world. At the time, we didn't really know what that meant. We soon found out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but we were glad that we had some people um, to help us. We had um, three people, a, a nice little family that came with us that had lots of sailing experience. They made sure that we got across in one piece less, <laughs> more or less <laughs> in apart, one from, piece. <laughs> apart from our own silly mistakes yeah we had a very early start because of the tides we had to leave bristol before 5 a.m i think it was was not happy about that <laughs> we had like four hours of sleep or something yeah the river to bristol is tidal so you can it only fills with water at certain points in the day so you had to do a mad rush to get out of there. Everything was going well, the engine started straight away, which was good. That was one of my main fears, was that the engine wouldn't start on the morning. We got into the locks, and that was all fine. We were slightly delayed in leaving, I think the swing bridge had an electrical fault or something. So we got all the way down the river, which I think is about six miles. It was uneventful, slowly motoring down the river. Very calm. Yeah and I made the mistake of assuming that's what the rest of the trip was going to be like. <laughs> yeah, silly Jonathan. <laughs> yeah, eventually we get to the mouth of the river. Things immediately got a lot more choppy. It's actually amazing how quickly it changed from being very calm to being very choppy. It was explained to us that it was particularly choppy at that time because the tidal current was going in the opposite direction to the wind. Um, and it, it had pretty high winds at the time. Um, we were looking at some very choppy water and my estimate of the, the waves, it, it was probably approaching about two meter waves. Yeah, the boat started bouncing around a lot. <laughs> and not just bouncing, but sort of rolling like, from side to side, which is the scariest thing. Like when yeah. it's doing this, yeah, 
that I can deal with but when it starts going side to side it's not fun it's scary it just felt like the boat was gonna go all the way over which obviously it wasn't so just as uh, we had started getting out to this part I made the foolish decision that now is a good time to go to the toilet <laughs> um, it was not a good idea I I mean I was half curious to see just how like bouncy it was inside the boat and <laughs> like I I thought it was a little bit fun just it was like doing a moonwalk where like gravity <laughs> just suddenly leaves <laughs> but then you land again it very quickly went from being amusing to being unpleasant and uh, yeah I got a little bit seasick as soon as I went back up um, a little bit being an understatement. <laughs> yeah, I'm ashamed to say that I did not keep my food down. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Jonathan. And we still had four hours to go. Oh no. Yeah, he didn't have a fun time after that. I'm smug because I didn't get seasick at all and I was fine. <laughs> As Jonathan was puking his guts up, that's when things got even worse. What happened was that the solar arch managed to almost escape the boat. <laughs> There's four fixings to hold it down and one of the fixings somehow came loose even though I'd used Loctite on it, somehow those screws still came loose. It jumped the fixing and just started waving itself all over the place. Yeah, and it was looking like the whole arch arch was going to crash down into the sea which wouldn't have been good. Mm. So luckily um, a few of us managed to grab it and wrestle it back into its position and then tie some ropes around it so that it couldn't escape and thank you so much to our crew members <laughs> for helping to save our solar panels. SOS, save our solar panels. But that was a bit of a terrifying experience and little did we know that something else was going on on the other end of the boat. <laughs> there was a point where um, I was feeling really ill and just couldn't even manage sitting on the deck anymore um, and I came below to use the toilet yet again because I had it in my mind that that would make me feel better and surprisingly it did. Mm -hmm. I actually felt immensely better sitting down below even though they had typically advise against that for motion sickness since they stare at the horizon but um, I guess for some people like myself it's different. <laughs> <laughs> some people are special <laughs> and Jonathan is one of those people. Anyway when I was down here I kept hearing a loud banging noise. I was a little distracted by how horrible I was feeling to actually figure it out. I just figured it was something rolling around in one of the lockers but yeah it was a very loud crashing banging noise which <coughs> didn't seem quite right. Yeah and I could hear it as well out in the cockpit but it sounded like it was coming from underneath me so I thought it was something in one of the cockpit lockers again that was just rolling around and that was a bit loose. I wasn't too worried about it I thought oh, we should probably check what that is when we arrive and make sure it's more secure next time. And when we did arrive we did check and we did see that our anchor had jumped the anchor roller. Yeah we fixed it down with with what the boat had available to it um, which was the anchor itself um, wrapped around the cleat. Um, I also tied it down and cleated it as a, a double insurance and figured that was enough but it never occurred to me that when the boat is, is going up and down at the front like this that it will smash into the water and then the, the anchor rises up and lifts out of the, the roller. And it, would seem that the previous owners of the boat hadn't thought about it either. There was no way of fixing the anchor in place. So there should have been probably some kind of bars over the top of the roller to stop it from jumping out or maybe a hole through the anchor itself so you can insert a key looking thing, I don't know what it's called. Pin. A pin yes. to hold it in place. The, the odd thing is, is the boat came with two pins which we had no idea at the time what they were for. We now realize that they're for the anchor, however, there was no place in, no the anchor. in the anchor, there's no hole there to put the pin through, so we have no idea how the previous owners dealt with this. That was a bit unfortunate. We were really, really lucky. Our, our boat actually has a very thick hull, which is a good thing because <laughs> otherwise... Thick-skinned. It, yeah, 
otherwise it could have made a hole and I feel so blessed <laughs> that it didn't. The damage is limited to a lot of chipping in the, the top coat yeah. of paint but it didn't um, barely even scratch the the fiberglass, the gel coat. It doesn't look that great but um, it's something that we'll be able to fix when we get to the boatyard. So I've got some stainless steel bars that are making little um, things go on either side of the anchor and then the pin will go through the top. Uh, we'll hold it down in place so that never happens again. Okay, so that was the first two disasters. Well, I guess you being sick is a disaster as well, but yeah. I'd say so, yeah. yes. That was the first three disasters, <laughs> but um, yeah, the, the sea wasn't finished with us yet. We were just getting into Cardiff, where we are now, and we were in the lock, and so we turned off the engine while we were waiting for the lock to fill up. So it's all fine, we're all just relieved that it's over, and that we're still alive, and that- Especially me. Yeah. Poor old Jonathan. So it's time for us to exit the lock and we go to start up the engine and it's completely dead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it just would not start nothing, which was really strange because it had been running fine the whole way. We've been having to sail part of the way, but unfortunately with everything that happened, it didn't end up happening. So we did use the motor. At one point it did overheat a little bit, but we figured that's because it was being pushed a little bit too hard and backed off a bit and then it seemed to be all right after that. For whatever reason, it was now completely dead. We were stuck in the locks in Cardiff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we had to call for a tow. Yeah, it was so embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they came and rescued us and dragged us out of the lock and dragged us to our visitor mooring. <laughs> so our original plan was that we would only be in Cardiff for two weeks and then we were gonna re recruit some more people to help us move on to our next stop. But it quickly became clear that the engine had other ideas. It is a sad fact that without an engine we can't get in and out of the marinas or, yeah. um, and without doing that you can't do sailing. So um, we're basically just stuck and we've spent hours and hours and um, had our family mechanic. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise known as my dad. He's come out two full days now um, trying to solve the problem and the engine's just being incredibly stubborn. I'm having to crawl in there to try to figure it out as well and the engines are not my favourite thing. Jonathan just doesn't stop complaining about how much he hates engines. Yeah, it looks like we might have a pretty serious engine problem on our hands. We don't know for sure yet. As it became clear that we weren't going to be able to leave Cardiff, we managed to book ourselves into a marina and get a tow to get there again. <laughs> so that's where we are now and we're going to stay here as long as it takes to get everything fixed and also to fix up the solar arch so that it can't run away again. So that was a summary of everything that went wrong. <laughs> we can move on to the things that went right. Which actually feels kind of funny to talk about when so many things went wrong, but look on the bright side, right? The one thing that went right was the picture never fell off the wall. We have a picture hanging on our wall and I meant to take it down before the start of the trip and I completely forgot until we were already underway and then I couldn't go down below because there was too much motion and I could just, just see the picture swaying back and forth on the wall. I was like, oh my god, that's going to fall off and smash. It didn't. <laughs> and neither did anything else. Everything actually stayed in place. Yeah, we, apart from the anchor and the solar arch, we did a really good job at stowing everything. Nothing fell out of any cupboards or anything like that, nothing broke. And we still have breakable crockery, but we managed not to break any of that either. The other thing that I would say was really good is we got to finally test out our boat and see how she copes. The boat <laughs> did really well. The main thing I'm impressed by is that we didn't get any leaks. There didn't seem to be water coming in anywhere, which is surprising for such an old boat. Normally they do have a few leaks. And we looked in the bilge when we arrived and it was completely dry. Well, as dry as it ever is. It was no wetter than it was when we left. Yeah. There's always like this much water in the bottom of the bilge that we can't get out because the pumps come and get it. And even though the anchor smashing up the bow was not a good thing, it did give us an appreciation for just how tough the boat is. Yeah, which is a good thing because we're gonna 
put it to the test <laughs> many times. And at the end of the day, you have to use the boat to know everything that needs to be done sometimes. Yeah, you're not going to know the weak spots until it actually breaks. <laughs> and Hopefully it doesn't actually break, but until you get some kind of warning sign. We're actually kind of glad that we're staying longer than two weeks because it turns out to be a really good area for learning to sail if we ever manage to fix iron. <laughs> There's a very big protected area which is big enough to sail in. Once the engine's going, we can or maybe find someone to come along with us and get out there and do some actual sailing in our boat. Yeah, I'm actually impressed that we're not put off from sailing at all. Apart from, well, maybe Jonathan's put off. I'm not put off. I'm, I'm not put off, but I'm not like jumping with joy at the idea of going out there again. It may turn out that we have to change our channel name again. Oh, don't say that. Uh, don't vegan be live at the marina or <laughs> If you want to stay living at the marina, I'm going without you. Just sleep on the pontoon. Yeah. Well, we hope you enjoyed hearing about our fails. Misadventures. <laughs> Thanks for bearing with us. <laughs> Please don't judge us. We're doing our best. <laughs> and we will see you next time. Bye. <laughs>